Hello everybody, welcome to Israel's Church of the Living God of Brother Rodney and Brother Caleb will be reading today. We'll be doing a lesson entitled, The Fear of the Lord. The Fear of the Lord. You know, and this is what uh, mainly uh, man's problem is when it comes to serving God. He don't fear the Lord. Uh, you know, men think that, you know, God is all love, in which he is, but he also... He also tells you to fear him. Because, and another thing, if you don't fear God, you're not going to keep his commandments. And you're not going to do nothing he said. You know, now, because how can, how can you say you're serving God and you do nothing that he commands you to do? Nothing. To me, that's not showing any fear. And I'm going to show you in the Bible, that's not showing any fear. So, uh, we got quite a few things to cover here. So, we're going to pick it up. Uh, at Proverbs, the first chapter. Proverbs, the first chapter. And, you know, that's, it's quite apparent that this man does not fear God. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Does that mean the broadcast update? So we just take that out the way. I don't want to do anything. You just click that out the way. You don't have to press where Just leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we had a little technical difficulties, so we're going to get back started again. Um, we're going to, like I say, Proverbs, the first chapter, and verse 1. Proverbs 1 and 1. You know, it, like I said earlier, it's quite apparent that man as a whole, they don't fear God. Because if they did, then we'd all be keeping God's commandments, we'd all be keeping God's Sabbath day. Yes, sir. So, but we're going to start this off, like I said, Proverbs, the first chapter, Proverbs 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, Proverbs 1 and 1. And when you get it, Brother Caleb, go ahead and read it. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, uh -huh. to know wisdom and instruction. To know wisdom and instruction, because that's what the Bible do, does. It gives you wisdom and it instructs you, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, uh -huh. to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, uh -huh. to give subtility to the simple. To give subtility to the simple, you know, to the layman. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. To the young man knowledge and discretion. Uh -huh. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A wise man, he's going to hear and he's going to increase learning. Go ahead. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Skip down to verse uh, 7. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord, that is the beginning of knowledge. That's the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord. Read that over. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh-huh. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools. Now, you see what, you see what the Lord had the, the prophet right? Yes, sir. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because, you know, uh, if people say, well, you ain't going to call them like, well, okay, well, the Lord called them food in. That's How's right. that? That's right, brother. <clears throat> he said, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Just bag up. Psalm 111. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Psalm 111 and 4. Everybody got it? Psalm 111 and 4. Go ahead and read it. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. Uh-huh. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. See, you know, that's what people need to understand about this God. He is gracious and full of compassion. Go ahead and read. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He hath given meat unto them that do what? Fear him. Fear him. Go ahead and read. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. Go ahead. He has showed his people the power of his works. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, you see what it said back to verse, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 5? He will ever be mindful of his covenant. What is the covenant? The Ten Commandments. Commandments yes, sir. He will ever be mindful of this. So God is taking notice when you're keeping his commandments. But go ahead and read though. He has showed his people the power of his works. 
that he may give the heritage, he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Uh -huh. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. Go ahead. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever they, and ever. They stand fast for how long? Forever and ever. Now you can't get around that, can you? That's right, brother. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> say you can't, you ought to keep your baby. Somebody ain't been doing some reading then, right? Make that plan. Somebody don't feel the Lord. They tell you how to keep the commandments because they don't feel the Lord. Come on. But you see that? He said his commandments are sure. They stand sad fast for how long? Forever, forever and, ever. and ever. That's right, brother. Now how can you get around that? You cannot. Go ahead and read. They stand fast forever and ever, uh -huh. and are done in truth and uprightness. Go ahead. He sent redemption unto his people. He have commanded his covenant forever. There it is again. He keeps saying this, don't he? Yes, sir. He said, he have commanded, he have sent redemption unto his people. He have commanded his covenant forever. Go ahead and read. Holy and reverent is his name. Holy and reverent is his name. So men should be calling themselves reverent then, shouldn't they? Because right. this God's name ain't it. That's right, brother. Yes, sir. Holy and reverent is his name. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what we're looking for right there. The fear of the Lord, that is the beginning of wisdom, just like it. the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. <laughs> Come on, man. He said, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That's right. Brother. All they. This go for it. Not just Israel. He didn't say a good understanding have Israel they keep his commandments. Did. He said, all they they keep his commandments. So this commandments for everybody. Did That's I? right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A good understanding have, uh, have all they that do his commandments. Go ahead and read. His praise endure forever. Now, so he said, the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. So now we're going <clears throat> to stop right here. We're going to just take a, a couple of looks at the definitions of fear. Because, uh, like I say, from time to time, we are going to be taking looking at definitions of words. So we're looking at the word fear real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> First, we're going to read an American heritage. Go ahead. Uh, American Heritage College Dictionary. Uh-huh. Uh, says, fear. A feeling of agitation uh -huh. and anxiety. A feeling of agitation and, anxi and anxiety. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Caused by present or imminent danger. Caused by present or imminent danger. Yes, sir. So you either know danger coming or standing there right in front of you. <laughs> So this is a motion that we all have, fear. I don't care what nobody says. I don't feel no man. Yes, you do. Let somebody put a gun up to your head and see if you don't feel. Mm -hmm. You're begging for your life. But anyway, go ahead and read. Uh, it goes on to say extreme reverence or awe it, as toward a deity. Uh-huh. Extreme reverence or an awe. You know, like being awe of God. Now we're gonna read it out of the, out of a, a Bible dictionary. This is Urban's Bible dictionary under fear. Yes, sir. Because this is a motion that you. Uh, this is a. I will show you later. This is a healthy emotion when it comes to God. <clears throat> yes, sir. This is Urban's Bible dictionary. Mm -hmm. Fear it says various degrees of anxious dread or terror. Uh huh. Ancient dread or terror. Yes, sir. You know, people get terrified. That's fear. Go ahead and read. Generally experienced in the face of danger or the suspicion thereof. In the most basic sense, fear arises from threats posed by human uh, uh, agitry. Human agitry. However, most frequently the Bible mentions fear as a response to God. Oh. Most uh, 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 gives you this frequently. Mm -hmm. It says most frequently the Bible mentions fear as the response to God. Uh huh. At times people fear God because they have sinned and anticipate divine retribution. That's somebody that can know that's got some sense though. Yes, sir. They know if they if they sin against God, they got some retribution coming from God. Yes, See, sir. a lot of men they don't fear God, so they don't uh, they don't understand that you that some retribution is coming. He might not punish you right then and there, but it's coming. Yes, Cause I'm gonna show you, the wicked is not gonna go unpunished. He might let you slide right now, but it's coming though. This is right, yes sir. Now, 
Let's go now. Let's go. Let's let's go to let's back up a little bit. Let's go to Psalm 96. <clears throat> so this is a motion that we all have, and this, when it comes to God, this fear, it is a healthy emotion, a healthy emotion. And I'm gonna show you. Psalms 96 and 4. Psalms 96 and 4. Go ahead. Yes, sir. For the Lord is great uh -huh. and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. He is to be feared above all gods. Why? Because those other gods be no gods. That's it, brother. Yes, sir. It's only one God that created this world, ain't it? It's only one God that created this man. You know, Buddha. You know, I ain't going to call him all because I don't want to offend nobody. But it's only one God that made this world, though. This, he's a, this God right here is to be feared above all God. Yes, sir. If you yes, want to worship those gods, that's fine. But this God right here, he is to be feared above all gods. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For all the gods of the nations are idols. <laughs> See, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> he said all the other gods, they are idols. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But the Lord made the heavens. Uh -huh. Honor and majesty are, are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. <coughs> Excuse me. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. Now that's among the nations. That the Lord reigneth. Go ahead. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Uh -huh. He shall judge the people righteously. He's going to judge the people righteously. God is a righteous judge, isn't he? Indeed. But you see what he said? He said all those, he is above all gods and all those other gods are idols. Those are some strong words, ain't it? <laughs> Plain, brother. Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus 3. <clears throat> Exodus 3. Let's see what his name is. Forever. Because, you know, uh, men got a problem with you saying the word Jesus. They got a problem with you saying Jehovah. They got a problem with these names. So, just in case you got a problem with this name, because we don't have no, no problem with the name where people say Yahweh, Yahshua. No, sir. We don't have no problem with that, do we? No, sir. But people got a problem when you say Jesus and, and uh, Jehovah and everything, right? Because you ain't supposed to say that. Okay, see if you got a problem with this then. This is Exodus 3 and 15. Nobody should have a problem with this. Exodus 3 and 15. Go ahead and read it. And God said moreover unto Moses, uh -huh. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Go ahead. The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, uh -huh. and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. Go ahead. This is my name forever. This is my name forever. So we know what God that is above all gods now, don't we? Yes, sir. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is my name forever. Go ahead. And this is my memorial unto all generations. And this is my memorial to all generations. So it don't matter when you was back there during the time of Moses, you was telling during the time of Isaiah, or during this time now, or during the time when the Lord returned. This is his name forever. Teach. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to all generations. So we know now what God we're dealing with. Look at this God. Look at what he's saying. Let's go to Isaiah 46 chapter. Isaiah 46. <clears throat> Look at what this God can do. Tell me if any other God can do this. Isaiah 46, and we're going to pick up in verse 5. Isaiah 46 and 5. Isaiah 46 and 5. Tell me if any other God can do this. Go ahead and read. Now Isaiah 46 and 5. Go ahead. To whom will you liken me? Uh-huh. And make me equal. See, he said, who to whom you gonna liken me to? And make me equal with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And compare me. Uh-huh. That we may be like. He said, you gonna compare who, 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 who can you compare me and say that we are like? Skip down to verse uh, uh uh skip down to verse nine and read it. Remember the former things of old. <coughs> uh -huh. For I am God. Go ahead. And there is none else. And there is none else. Go ahead. He's talking about these idols now, because you know it's two in the God here. Well we'll we'll deal with that some other time. Let's let's keep on the lesson. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. 
I am God and there is none like me. Uh huh. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. What other God do you know can do this? None, my brother. None. Declaring the end from the beginning. Go all the way to Genesis, the 49th chapter, and I can show you where the gathering of the saints are going to be to Shiloh. Yes, sir. Hey, Shiloh ain't gathering no saints yet. That's the Lord. That's Jesus. Teach. He ain't gathering no saints yet. He called the end from the beginning. And I'm going to show you. He said, declaring the end from the beginning. Go ahead. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. <laughs> He said, from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, go ahead. Saying, uh -huh. my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Uh -huh. Calling a ravenous bird from the, e from the east, excuse uh -huh. me, the man that ex executeth my counsel from a far country. Go ahead. Yea, I have spoken it. I would also bring it to pass. Uh -huh. I have purposed it. Uh -huh. I would also do it. He said, I have purposed it, and I will do it. <laughs> This was God we dealing with, the God that uh, flooded the earth. Yes, sir. Said he was going to do it. Yes, sir. Took Noah and seven, seven other people along with seven, uh, uh, seven, uh, seven by seven of the clean beasts and two by two, two of the unclean beasts, put them on this ark, right, flooded the earth, mm -hmm. then turned around and dried it up. Teach, brother. Teach. Now, what other God you know can do this? No. This is the God we're supposed to be serving right here, ain't it? That's right. All those other gods ain't nothing but idols. That's it. You know, brother told me yesterday, we serve the same shit. You know, we got to come to some type of common ground since we serve the same God. No, we don't serve the same God because my God is the God of the Sabbath. Yes, sir. Now, if you're keeping the Sabbath, then okay, that's your God too then. My God is God of the Sabbath. Let's go now. Let's go to Haggai. Let's go to Haggai, the first chapter. Haggai 1. And if you go to Zephaniah, then the next book should be Haggai. If you go to Zechariah and bag up one book, you right. be in Haggai. That's right. So we go to Haggai 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Haggai 1 and 5. I'm just, you know, I want to show you a little bit about this guy first before we get into you fearing him. <laughs> but look what he has done. I, I'm sorry, Haggai 1. And look, look, look at what the, the even the, he can mess with you on a personal level. He can mess with you on a personal level. Look at, look, I just want you to see this. Haggai 1, and we're going to pick up at verse 5. Go ahead and read. Now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. consider your ways. You have so much, uh -huh. and bring in little. He said, you know, consider your ways. You know, you out there sowing much, working hard, but you're bringing in little. Go ahead and read. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Uh -huh. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Go ahead. Ye clothe with, ye clothe you, clothe you, but there is none warm. Uh huh. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with hope. He said, He that earneth wages, he earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. So that bag, you put money in that bag, but it got holes in it. Mm -hmm. Why? Skip down to verse 9, go in. Ye look for much. Uh huh. And lo, it came to look. He said, You look for much. And it came to little. Go ahead. And when ye brought it home, I did blow it upon it. Whoa. You see that? He said, when you brought that money up, when you brought it home, I blew upon it. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, men are working hard and then when they expect to get them big checks and they look at their check. Oh, man. Come on. The man. Lord don't be mess with you on the personal. Look at this guy here. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> he, he flooded the earth and then he come and mess with you on the personal level, too. Yes, sir. Come and take your money from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at, look at the God that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. He said, you look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Go ahead and read. Why? Uh-huh. Said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste. Uh-huh. And ye run every man into his own house. He said, my house is laying in waste, and you run into your house. You're supposed to take care of my house. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The Lord can mess with you on a personal level. You know, you thinking you're going to get all this money. Man, I'm putting them out with it. Then when you get your check, the Lord said he blew on it. Mm -hmm. You take care of your business, but you ain't taking care of his, though. And you ain't taking care of his because you don't fear him. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, the second chapter. We're going to get to the new book, 1 Samuel 2. We got to lay the groundwork first, don't we? Yes, sir. 1 yes. Samuel 2 and 1. 1 Samuel 2 and 1. <clears throat> Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. <clears throat> and had I prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Uh -huh. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. Go ahead. Because I rejoice in thy salvation. Uh huh. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. Go ahead. For there is none beside thee. Uh, well, didn't we just read that in Isaiah? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead and read. This is the noise she was talking about, didn't she? Go ahead and read. Neither is there any rock like our God. He said, Neither is there any. Who is a rock? Christ is that rock, ain't he? Indeed. This is what we're talking about. Yes, sir. The Father didn't, the Father don't deal with man. The Father don't deal with man. Go ahead and read. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Uh-huh. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Ooh, that's what I want to get to right there. The Lord is a God of knowledge. So you can't be unwise in worshiping the Lord, can you? Make that plain, brother. You know, you just uh, 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 going to church and then you just sitting there for a couple of hours. No. You're supposed to be learning something when you go to church. Yes, you can't sir. be a, This God is a God of knowledge. He, want, he wants to teach you something. He wants you to learn something. That's it. It's written. He wants you to learn to fear Him. Mm -hmm. And by fearing the Lord, man depart from evil. Read that again. It says, Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Uh -huh. Proudly. Exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Go ahead. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Ooh, so all that lip service, that ain't nothing. He said by him actions are weighed. So he's going to judge you according to your works and your actions. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you show your fear of the Lord by your actions, don't he? Don't you? It's written. <laughs> just because just we say it, that don't mean we fear the Lord, do we? Because we fear the Lord, then we would be doing what he tell us to do then, wouldn't we? At least to our best of our ability, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. But you're going to say, you know, the Lord Sabbath is the first day of the week, or this is the day you supposed to, the Lord gave you to worship on, and then, okay, if you want to worship, you're supposed to worship the Lord every day. Men think they say something because they say that. You're supposed to worship the Lord, every, but he commands you to worship him on what day? The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. Yes, sir. And then you going to say, okay, you, you worship him on Sunday, that's fine. <laughs> but then what about the Sabbath day, though? You're going to ignore the fact that you're supposed to worship him on this day and worship him on another day. Just say, forget that day and worship him on this day. Mm. You can't do that with God. Mm -hmm. You're yes, supposed sir. to worship him every day, but this is the day he commands you. But what is everybody doing on the Sabbath day? Running off, washing their car, going out. Uh, uh, drinking or uh, uh, you know whatever they do, watching football, whatever. Teach, brother. You know, brothers tell much. You know, uh, well, we're not even supposed to go out the house on the Sabbath day. I said, read that to me, brother. <laughs> Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. First, he sat down. Then he stood up to read, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. And there was people in the synagogue too, wasn't it? Because yes, he said, today these scriptures fulfilled in your ears. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see where you're supposed to worship. I don't see where you're supposed to. Look, the Lord said you're supposed to have a holy convocation on the Sabbath day. What is a convocation? Gathering. A holy gathering. But anyway, but you ain't going to do it no way because you don't fear God. You, don't, you ain't going to do it. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 11 chapter. Let's look at some people that did fear God. Hebrews 11. Because by the fear of the Lord, men depart from wickedness. <coughs> Hebrews 11 and 1. 
And this, but this is how you can start right here. Because it said the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom, ain't it? Mm -hmm. But look at this, though. Because you ain't going to fear no God. You ain't got no faith in him. You ain't going to fear him. Hebrews 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. The evidence of things not seen. Go ahead. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Now they had faith, didn't they? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 6. Go ahead. 6. Uh-huh. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you got to believe in this God. And you show that you believe in him and got faith in him by what? By your works. Amen. All that lip service, God's going to judge man by his actions. Mm -hmm. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Go ahead. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Uh-huh. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Go ahead. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, uh -huh. moved with fear. See, he moved with what? Fear. Fear. He feared the Lord. Lord, he went out there and started making that art, didn't he? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, people sir. like, you know, no, no, you build this guy got to be crazy. He building an ark on dry land. <laughs> he moved with fear. That's right, brother. He showed his fear by his action, didn't he? Yes, sir. Now, what man you know going to go out and get, unless he feared God, he going to go out and get seven by seven of animal, two by two of the unclean, and two by, uh, uh, clean, seven by seven, and two by two of the unclean. That's right, brother. Well, what man you know going to do this? Before the rain. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Then build a, build this big old arch and stall for him, put food on there, everything. What man you know going to do this? Come on. Build a build an art big as a football field. Mm -hmm. He had to be fearful, didn't he? Indeed, brother. Go ahead and read. Verse 7 again. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen. Uh -huh. Not seen as yet, excuse me, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Go ahead. By the which he condemned the world and, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Uh -huh. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, uh -huh. obeyed. He, he did what? Obeyed. He obeyed. So when you fear the Lord, you're going to obey him, ain't you? Amen. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. He obeyed, obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. Not knowing whether he went. Skip down to verse 17. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. How many, wait a minute. He offered up his son? Yes, sir. How many people you know going to do this? Mm -hmm. You got to fear God in order to do this, don't yes, you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. you're going to be like, mm, wait a minute. Ain't this another way we can get around this? You understand? Mm -hmm. But this man, he feared God. He didn't, he didn't waver or nothing. Go ahead and read. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Uh -huh. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Go ahead. Of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So they said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So he told Abraham, this in Isaac, your seed going to be called, didn't he? Yes, sir. So now if I kill him, then how is my seed going to be called in, in Isaac? Uh -huh. So he believed God, didn't he? Indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he was getting ready to kill his son. Mm -hmm. But this why? Go ahead. He feared the Lord. But, 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 but keep reading though. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. Accounting that God was able to do what? Raise, raise him, up. him up. He trusted in the Lord, didn't he? Yes, sir. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. Go ahead. Even from the dead. Uh-huh. From which also he received him in a figure. Now. So these men showed their faith by their works, didn't they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God commanded them to do something, and they done it. Mm -hmm. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh, let's go to James, the second chapter, James two. <clears throat> James two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse fourteen. James two and fourteen. James two and fourteen. Everybody got it. Amen. 
James 2 and 14. Go ahead and read it. What does it profit, my brethren, through a man, though a man say he hath faith uh -huh. and have not works? Uh -huh. Can faith save him? Well, hold on now. He said, what does it profit, my brother, though a man say he hath faith? Because, you know, we can say we have faith, don't okay, we? But if we don't show it, then that don't mean nothing. He said, what does it profit, my brother, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Uh-uh. Faith can't save you. Your works, faith and works can save you. Because <laughs> you keep reading. Yes, sir. Fifteen. Uh huh. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, uh huh, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Uh huh. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful. To the body. That's just like you know somebody hungry and you say, hey man, be warm and filled, but you don't give them nothing. You didn't profit that person nothing, did you? Make it plain. I'm gonna go and pray for you. No. Give me something to eat. Then pray for me. That's right. You that I don't get it. back in this position again. That's it. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. What does it profit? Uh even so faith. Uh-huh. If it hath not works. It's dead, being Ooh. alone. He said, in faith, if it have not worked, it is dead. It is dead. Go ahead. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. Uh-huh. And I have works. Go ahead. Show me thy faith without thy works. He said, show me thy faith without thy works. Go ahead. And I will show thee my faith by my works. And I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Because that's how you show your faith, by your works. God tells you to do something, you do it. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. Whether it's keeping the Sabbath day, the holy day, whatever it is, whatever God commands you to do, be baptized in the name of Jesus, hey, that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You show your faith by your works. Go ahead and read. 19. Uh-huh. Thou believest that there is one God. Uh-huh. Thou dost well. Go ahead. The devils also believe and tremble. Ooh. You see that? He said, yeah, uh, 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 thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and do what? Tremble. tremble. Now just think about that for a minute. You're talking about spirits. Mm -hmm. They tremble. They, they understand this thing about the fear of the Lord, don't they? Indeed. It's this man that don't understand about the fear of the Lord. These spirits understand that one day they're going to they gonna meet their demise. But man don't understand that one day he gonna meet his demise. So therefore, he don't fear God. Preach. But these devils, they fear him and they tremble. That's right, brother. They believe in him and they tremble. They still doing their wickedness, but they still trembling, don't they? Yes, sir. Because they know one day they gonna meet their demise. That's how smart these spirits are. And that's how smart we need to be, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go to Luke. Luke, the 8th chapter. Luke, the 8th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Luke 8 and 26. This is the thing that we need to understand right here. We need to understand this. We have to fear the Lord. Because we don't fear the Lord, we ain't going to do nothing that he tells us to do. Luke 8 and 26. Luke 8 and 26. Let me show you how the devils fear the Lord. <laughs> Let me show you how they feel. 26. Go ahead and read it. And they arrived at, at the country of the Gadarens. Uh huh. Which is over against Galilee. Go ahead. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time. Uh huh. And wore, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tomb. Now this guy, he had devils. He abode in the tombs. You know, <laughs> in tombs. He he abode amongst the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, if us to do something like that, you gotta be you gotta be possessed by the devil to do something like that, don't Come you? On, brother. Go ahead and read. <laughs> 28. Uh-huh. When he saw Jesus.